Well, welcome back to Randall State Bank. Rich Jones here again uh, with uh, Daryl Pulak from Baxter Insurance Group. Thanks for joining me today, Daryl. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about today, Daryl, is uh, auto insurance and some of the challenges, uh, some of the things to be careful of while you're getting auto insurance uh, for just the, the normal everyday driver. Sounds good, Rich. Uh, being in the industry uh, over 20 years, I've seen a lot of different interesting situations oh, when sure. it comes to uh, <laughs> insurance. Uh, one mistake that I see all the time is people call and they say, hey, add this vehicle onto my policy, which sounds like a very simple request. Right. But the question is, how is that vehicle titled? Right. So then I find out that it's my cousins or it's the client's relative or their grandma's car that they want to add to the policy. Yeah. Well, you cannot insure something that you do not own. Right. So you have to have titled that insurance before or to that vehicle before you can add it to your auto policy. Um, another thing that I see is so many people go online and purchase their auto insurance online. Well, when you can name your own price or, or you know, do whatever for coverages, what happens is people are making mistakes and they're buying too low of coverages. Right. And they're buying state minimums, right. which is 30,000 per person, 60,000 per accident. And what people don't realize is that a lot of times, if they bump up those limits to maybe 100,000 or 300,000 or even 500,000, it might be cheaper than the state minimums. Right, not only that, but a, a new car average today has gotta be somewhere between 40 and $50,000. So. Uh, you want to make sure that you have enough yeah. to, to, to cover that, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, and another thing that we see is uh, when people go online to purchase their auto insurance, um, they might forget to tell the insurance company about um, this 18 year old driver that's in the household. They might forget to tell about their boyfriend or their girlfriend that lives in the household with them. Mm -hmm. um, and what people do not realize is a lot of those online carriers have exclusions. When you go back to the back of the policy and start reading the fine print, there are exclusions that those drivers are not covered while operating your uh, your vehicle. Right. Um, I was at a convention uh, with uh, the Hartford here last year, and I asked, you know, if they had that exclusion in their right. policy, yeah. and they didn't. And I said, well. I mean, you're gonna put that in there? And they says, well, we're thinking about it. And I said, well, it can't be that big of a, a deal. They told me that 45% of all their claims are because of an undisclosed driver. Really? 45% wow. of all claims yeah. paid out on auto insurance is because of an undisclosed driver. So you can understand why insurance companies are putting that in there and people are letting yeah. people that are living in their household drive their vehicles, but they're not being listed on the policy and they're thinking that it's covered when it's really not, or yeah. maybe state minimal limits or a reduction in coverages and so yeah. forth. So yeah. uh, those are a couple of the pitfalls that, that we see. Again, if you have specific questions, uh, feel free to submit uh, to our uh, Facebook or Randall yeah. State Bank's uh, Facebook yeah, page. Uh, we'll try to answer those questions and get back to everyone. Yeah. Perfect, thanks Daryl, I appreciate your time today, good tips. Thank you for having me, Rich. Yeah.